Okay, so I thought I would make a little tutorial for um, people on how to code for robotics because a big thing is that um, a lot of the teams don't have people who know how to code or they might know how to code but not how to use the specific vex commands and everything. So I'm going to make this little, um, I guess, video series uh, to help get you guys started and learn the basics and some of the more advanced stuff about coding with VEX. So if you want to start coding with VEX, the first thing you got to do is go to vexrobotics.com slash vexcode dash download. And I'll link that in the description of this video um, and on the website as well. So you can just copy that. And you'll want to go all the way down to VexCode Pro V5. And then, obviously, if you're on Mac, download for Mac. If you're on Windows, download for Windows. I'm on Windows, so I'll just click that. You download the exe file, run it. It'll um, install and everything. Yeah, so I'm going to open it up right now. So here's the application. Um, so if you're starting from scratch, what you'll want to do is go over to File here, and then you'll see Open Examples. Now this is this is going to be really helpful for you because there are a bunch of like examples for different bots and uh, for a lot of different um, stuff. Like you can see, there's claw and arm here. There's using the arms with degrees. There's adjusting speed, drivetrain. Uh, there's even Electromagnet actions. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of examples here that you might want to check out uh, if you don't know how to do something because they will have all the code right there for you. Um, but what we're going to do and what you should do if you're making a code for your robot is use the competition template. So it's this one right here. It's under templates. So we'll click on that, click next, we'll name it, we'll name it um, tutorial. So once you open the code, you'll be greeted with all of this. So I'm just going to go um, around the UI and tell you what most of this stuff does. So over on the left here, um, you have files for all of the code. Um, you're mainly going to be working in main, and that's what's going to open up um, every time you launch the code, so you don't really have to worry about this too much. Um, up here is just the same file, edit, and everything. Um, in here, there's just some shortcuts you can use, and in here, there's stuff like commenting and everything. Um, it's also the command palette. Um, in the middle here, um, you have the slot select, which allows you to choose which slot on your controller uh, the code will go into. So this is mainly useful if you want different autonomouses, and so you can store multiple autonomouses on the uh, same code, uh, same controller. Sorry. Um, so you always have something for whatever corner of the field you're on. You can also rename your code up here. Um, so I can name this tutorial one, and I can make the description just, um, I can just leave it blank if I wanted to. Um, this enable expert robot config and enable expert autocomplete. Um, this expert autocomplete you might find useful, um, I do. Um, but this expert robot configuration, you probably shouldn't use until you're quite familiar with what you're doing in here. Um, over to the right here, we've got um, the controller and brain um, symbols. And then these will turn green when you connect uh, your controller or your brain, obviously. Um, this one over here is the build button. Um, this will compile all your code and tell you if uh, you still have errors when you compile it that you need to fix. Um, 
When you attach the controller and the brain, you will be able to download using this button. Uh, you can also run the code and stop it if you have the brain connected. And over here, we have the robot configuration. So here, you can add stuff like controllers, drivetrains, motors, um, vision sensors, inertial sensors, and everything, everything you can um, want to add is here. So let's say I want to add a controller. So I'll click controller, and then it'll give me a name here, and then um, you, can, you have the option to select buttons to do a certain thing. Um, usually we'll just do this in the code, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, we can click done, and then if you see here, it added the device. If you look at this right here, it added the controller right there. And then if we want to use a controller, now uh, we'll refer to it as controller 1. We can do this with motor 2. So we can select whichever port it's going to be in. We'll do 1. And then whatever gear cartridge you're using, if you're using the medium, select medium. If you're using the speed motor, which would be blue, you would set select speed. And if you're using the torque motors, you'd select the torque one, which is red. Um, and then you can also choose which direction it's going to go in. So you can choose forward or reverse. And then you can also rename this motor. So we can do first motor. And then whenever you refer to this motor in the code, you'll refer to it as first motor. And then this over here is the help button. So this one, you can right click on a command, um, like right there, command help. OK, this one, it wasn't able to find one. Um, but if we start putting some in, we should be able to do that. And if you go to command reference over here, uh, you can open these up, and these have a bunch of different commands you can use in your code. So we'll use these in, this, in a little bit. Also, a couple other things to note. Um, when you modify anything in the code here, um, next to the file, it'll give a M there. That means that the file has been modified, and it hasn't been saved yet. So when you do Control S, or if you go to File, Save here, um, it'll save the file and that will go away. Uh, down here is also the output, so this is where um, you're going to see stuff like saving project, and like downloading, or when you add something in the robot config, it'll say it here as well. Um, and if you want to output to the terminal for stuff like debugging, um, it's also something here. And if there's problems with the code, like so let's say I delete a bracket here, it'll show up here as well. And in the code, it'll be um, highlighted with red and also underlined. So when you're done coding, um, you'll want to save, obviously. And then what I recommend for all teams is make sure you uh, have a bunch of backups. So when you make changes to the code, a lot of times, either they won't work, or sometimes like you'll edit the autonomous, and now it doesn't work, but your old one did. And if you don't make a backup of that old one, then you're going to be kicking yourself, because now your autonomous doesn't work at all, and you don't have a version where it did. So after every major change, what I find is a good idea is to go to Save As, and then save it somewhere. Preferably with a different name. Let's go tutorial 2 here. Save that. You will not open that. And then that will be your previous version. And you can keep editing on this one. And um, once you're done with this version, you can close out of it. And then when you open up Vexcode again, and you want to reopen it, uh, if you see recent here, 
can usually click on that. Um, but if it's not in here, what you can do is file, open, and then find it wherever it's stored. Um, I think the default one is in documents under Vexcode projects. And yep, it's tutorial one right here. So we can open that and we're back where we started. So a final couple things of note here. Um, obviously I can't make a tutorial for all the situations uh, you'll have to uh, deal with. Um, so you will have to figure out how to solve a lot of these problems on your own. And there are a lot of resources to help you with that. Um, some of them are, I already showed you, were the examples in here. Uh, a lot of these will give you um, great examples for how to do a lot of different stuff. Um, if you do need more help though, there's also tutorials built into it. Uh, there's stuff like configuring a vision sensor or device setup, motors. So you can just click on one of these and it'll open a video that you can play that will help you with this stuff. Um, additionally, uh, if you go online, there are a bunch of resources to help you here too. Um, a good one is the VEX forum, where if you're trying to troubleshoot a specific problem, you can search it in here and you can see if any uh, forums come up. Uh, you can also make one yourself uh, if nobody's had the same issue as you. Uh, if you're looking for specific like syntax or commands and how to use them, the Vexcode Doxygen is great. Um, this is basically a list of all the Vex specific commands in um, Vexcode Pro V5. So it's extremely useful, especially if you're not familiar with something like a vision sensor or uh, even a motor. Um, if you're looking for some more simple tutorials, um, these don't go too in-depth, but they're good um, for specific stuff. Like if you go to uh, kb.vex.com, which is the Vex knowledge base, um, there is some stuff here, like configuring four motor drivetrains and stuff. And lastly, if you don't really know what you're doing with C++, um, W3Schools is good. Um, this isn't VEX specific, this is just for C++. And it'll introduce you to stuff like um, um, making variables, using while loops, using um, uh, for loops, there's uh, if statements and everything. So this is good if you just want to learn the basics of the language. Um, but with that said, uh, I think that's enough for this video. Uh, I'm going to make some more videos going into more of the actual coding. Uh, this was just sort of an introduction to um, getting the development environment on your computer and um, all the different tools it gives you.